Here's another review video getting ready for the first part of Chapter 3's quiz, the quiz that covers closed integral extremas, mean value theorem, Rolle's theorem, and then extrema over the entire real numbers. So I'm going to go through just a couple problems from the beginning of the chapter. I'm not going to go into the entire real numbers, just give you three examples of things that we do over a closed interval. First one that you're looking at right here is a closed interval extrema. The directions will just say find any extrema of this particular function on this interval. So first thing you need to do do is take the derivative and again make sure you take it correctly because it really the rest of the problem depends on the ability to take this derivative so we have 3x squared plus 4x minus 4 next I want to figure out when this derivative equals 0 so you can either use the quadratic formula program into your calculator or you can see if it factors this one does factor really nicely it factors 3x minus 2 x plus 2. So our critical values are x equals 2 thirds and x equals negative 2. Now we want to make a table and contained in our table should be any critical value that is in the interval. So if you look at your critical values, net 2 thirds is actually not in the interval so we're not going to discuss it. Negative 2 is so it goes in my table. And then I also want to put the endpoints of the interval in my table. It doesn't matter what order as long as you have all the things in your table that you need to check. At this point, then, you want to go to the original function to get your y values. So we go here to get this, put it into the original function. Because you're allowed to use a calculator on this quiz, I, I would recommend just pulling it up on your calculator, looking at a table. It'll save you a lot of time. When you put negative 2 into the original function, whether you do it in your head or with the calculator, you get 9. When you put 0 into the original function, you get 1. And you, when you put three, negative 3 into the original function, you get 4. The problem is wants to know the minimum maximum. We're not talking about relative versus absolute here. We're just looking for a single answer. There can be ties for the highest and lowest. This one is your lowest value, so this would represent the minimum in the interval. And then this one is your highest value. This would represent the maximum in your interval. And that's all you need to show in order to get full credit. Again, you don't have to do anything with absolute or relative. Just circle the ones that are minimums and maximums. The next section that we did covered two theorems, Rolle's theorem and the mean value theorem. I just want to do a quick recap of Rolle's theorem and why there are certain situations where it won't work, and then we'll go into actually applying each theorem. Rolle's theorem had three conditions. You had to have a continuous function in the interval, so you couldn't have any holes or gaps or asymptotes. You had to have a differentiable function, so not only could you not have that, but you also couldn't have sharp points. And the endpoints had to be equal. So when you put ever whatever the beginning and end numbers are in your interval, when you put them in, they have to give you the same height. So the first one is just recapping, breaking some of the conditions. So if you look at the first one that's listed up here, f of x equals the absolute value of x minus 2. x minus 2 in the absolute value is definitely a continuous function. It looks like a v if you can kind of picture it or you can graph it on your calculator. However, there is a sharp point at x equals 2. And because of that, it is not differentiable. Double check your interval. 2 is definitely in the interval. Therefore, we cannot apply Rolle's theorem. The second one, what you're going to notice is it has a denominator, and the denominator would equal 0 when x equals 0. We have an asymptote there. So it is not continuous. In addition to that, if it's not continuous, then automatically it will be not differentiable. So this will automatically break both the first and the second condition. Once that first condition is broken, the second condition will break as well, because not continuous means it's also not differentiable. So just, just recapping the conditions to make sure you're comfortable with that. The next problem actually wants you to apply the theorem. When you're taking a quiz and it says to apply Rolle's theorem, you do not need to check the conditions. If it says check the conditions first, then obviously check the conditions. But in this one, when, as soon as you see the directions just say apply Rolle's theorem, then you can immediately start doing Rolle's theorem, which said you need to find the critical value, so you take the derivative, set it equal to 0, and find the critical value that is inside this interval. So we're going to add 6, 8x equals 6. So x equals 3 fourths, which is definitely in the interval. Your answer will be one or more answers. They are x values. They have to be contained within the interval. And then finally, the last one, applying the mean value theorem. Again, if it says to apply the mean value theorem, you can work under the assumption that the conditions hold. The conditions for the mean value theorem are just continuity and differentiability, nothing about the endpoints being the same height like roles. First thing I want to do with mean value theorem is I want to take the derivative. So my derivative is going to be 3x squared minus 5x plus 3. That's the f prime of c side. If you think of your mean value theorem, one side says f prime of c. That means the derivative. The other side, you want to do f of b minus f of a over b minus a. 
And here's where it really helps to have the calculator access, because you have to plug 4 into the original function. You have to plug 0 into the original function, which obviously isn't that bad. And then you have to divide by 4 minus 0. I've already done that ahead of time, so I'll just give you the values. And I use my table to make it easier. This is what I got. I got 115 when I put 4 in, minus negative 1 when I put 0 in. I end up getting a top to be 116 divided by 4 is 29. So I have this polynomial equal to 29. I'm going to bring the 29 over, because whether I choose to factor or use the quadratic formula, either way it has to be in that standard form. So I have 3x squared minus 5x minus 26 equals 0. I did attempt to do some factoring when I came up with this problem. It did not work. So at this point, I went to the quadratic formula. If you have it programmed on your calculator, that would be wonderful. If you don't, then you have to just go through and do the formula. Keep in mind, for the formula, either way, whether you do it by program or by hand, a is 3, b is negative 5, c is negative 26. You're going to type those values into your calculator. You get two answers. And they are decimal, so I'm going to round them three decimal places. 3.893 and negative 2.226. Look at your interval, because again, your answer or answers have to be inside the interval. The negative 1 is not in my interval, so I get one single answer. I am rounding it three decimal places, approximately 3.893. So that reviews the whole first part of the chapter, everything up until we start looking at the entire real numbers going into section 3.3.